Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Shay and this is my 32 week pregnancy update. If you're new here, I'm Shay and these are obviously, as I've said, my pregnancy updates. I've been doing them since eight weeks. So if you wanna check back for earlier updates, you can look at my channel and see those earlier videos. I am here with my guide dog, I'm blind, and so she is always in the videos too, and she's on the couch, just snuggled, she's been enjoying a little bit of sunshine coming in our window. <laughs> she loves sunbathing, don't you? You're happy doggy. So she's very relaxed next to me. And the way that I do these pregnancy updates, I usually have kind of some categories just to organize myself <laughs> and be able to remember the things that I want to say. So I always do a blind parenting tip of the week in case you are a blind parent or you know another blind parent that could maybe benefit from some ideas. I also usually talk about my symptoms and just what I've been experiencing in my body, baby development, some things that I've been just kind of thinking about and then also prayers that I've been praying because I'm a Christian and that's important to me. And yeah, that's usually about it. The blind parenting tip of the week is surrounding a topic that I mentioned last time. And that was about, well, I said weaning, but what I really meant was just starting solids. I don't know why, that's just something that really gives me anxiety. It's partially the choking risk. It's partially just the fact that so many different people have so many different opinions on what you should feed your child and when and I really haven't done the research to be able to sort through what I think will be best and it just yeah it's just one of those things that's really overwhelming me at the moment but there are a few little practical things also I just really don't like sticky things I don't like gooey things and obviously when you have a baby there's plenty of sticky and gooey <laughs> stuff to deal with um and like cleaning up after <laughs> my baby has been eating and there's like drool and pureed food everywhere oh it just I don't know kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies <laughs> but <laughs> anyway so there are some practical things that you can do to make feeding solids a little bit easier and I just thought I would mention some of the ideas that I've run across particularly for blind parents but for anyone really so the first thing is something called, the brand that I was looking at is called a Boon Squirt Spoon. I can link it down below. And that, I think, basically the concept is that you put the food, you pack the food into a little squeezy pouch, basically, and then you can squeeze the food directly into the spoon from the little pouch. And it just makes it a little bit easier to get the food in the spoon and get the spoon in your baby's mouth. Um, I think some of them, the baby can actually suck on the little pouch in order to get the food out themselves. So you can also go down that route. I don't know if that's the Boon Squirt style. I think the Boon Squirt style is actually a spoon. But I think there are some that are just like pouches and you pack the pouch and then the baby kind of sucks on the pouch. Kind of saves you some hassle. So that might be something to look into. Another idea is get yourself things that are going to make your life easier for cleanup because it's gonna be a mess no matter what you do from what I can tell. So get yourself a silicone bib. They're just totally made out of silicone. They wrap around the babies. Now can you just snap them behind, obviously just like a normal bib, but it has sort of a cutout and it's a silicone kind of bowl to catch food that falls down and I've heard that can make life so much easier because it's not falling all over their clothes, it just falls right into that little pocket and you clean out the pocket. The other thing you can get is a full body bib, so basically like a smock that covers them entirely so that you just have to wash the bib rather than wash like everything they're wearing. You can also get some bibs that attach to their high chair if you're using a high chair and that can basically cover the tray of the high chair while you're feeding them. You can also get silicone placemats that you can just put on the high chair tray and same thing all you have to do is pop it under the tap or give it a wipe and then you don't really have to worry about cleaning the actual high chair. The other thing I was going to mention is just getting trained in child CPR. I did this a few years ago for a job and they taught us how to do the whole 
Heimlich maneuver as well on babies and how to, yeah, obviously do CPR. And I mean, obviously it's one of those things you never want to have to use, but it's good training and I would definitely recommend getting it if you feel concerned about choking risks. And I would also mention, I feel a little hesitant to do something like baby led weaning. From what I understand, baby led weaning, you, instead of pureeing the food, you cut them into kind of strips for the baby to pick up and try to eat on their own. And the choking risks there can just be a little bit higher. So I don't think I feel comfortable with baby led weaning um, for the most part, but we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna kind of start with purees and see how I feel <laughs> at the time, depending on we where baby is and how she's doing. That is our blind parenting tip of the week. Moving on to symptoms. Definitely been having back pain, but I find that walking really, really helps. So, I mean, night and day, like my back is so painful if I spend the day like sitting down and not really doing anything. But if I walk and if I stretch and, you know, just stay active throughout the day, really helps. Like the pain basically goes away or is very, very reduced, which I'm very thankful for. Tiredness has been a major issue the last couple of weeks throughout the day and in the evenings, just pretty much all the time. I think part of it is that my sleep has not been very good. So I'm just waking up to pee more often, like usually twice a night now. And then I have to get back to sleep. And a lot of the time it's not easy and <laughs> I'll be up for like two hours. And sometimes I just wake up because I'm really sore. Um, and then same thing, like I just have a hard time getting back to bed. Or like there have been times where I've just woken up really early in the morning, like 5.30 or 6.30, and then I'm just like, well, <laughs> not gonna sleep after this. And like, that's fine. I actually like early mornings, but it just depends on my husband's schedule because um, his work schedule fluctuates a fair amount. So usually, you know, if he's on late, it's usually I'm pretty much on late in terms of like when I'm making dinner, when I'm eating dinner and when I'm like doing chores and all that sort of thing. So if I'm up since 5.30 and then we're not going to bed until really, really late because he's working till eight o'clock, then it just can get, yeah, it's just exhausting. Other than that though, I feel like my symptoms have been very, very mild and I'm really grateful. I have had some foot cramping, hand cramping and leg cramping. I think those are pregnancy symptoms. I didn't actually read them anywhere until this week. It mentioned leg cramping, but in general, it hasn't been too bad. Baby is like three and a half pounds now, I think, somewhere around there. And I think 15 to 17 inches. So I don't think she's gonna grow much in length from here on out. It's pretty much just putting on weight. And apparently she can tell the difference even from in, inside the womb between day and night now. And she's really, really settle, settling into that kind of sleeping pattern that you see with newborns apparently. And I think her brain is developing, her lungs are still developing some, but yeah, I think the main goal is kind of all of her practicing her sucking and doing all of the foot pedaling <laughs> and just staying active in there and getting ready for birth, which is crazy because it is coming up only in a couple of months. So we are very excited. She has been very, very active as usual. And that's been really fun. I just treasure those moments so much feeling my belly just like heave and move around <laughs> as she's moving around. I am still just really, really loving, like particularly in the mornings <laughs> or if I wake up at 2 a.m. she'll be really, really hyper. And so whenever I wake up then, it's just so nice to like put my hand there and just rest and just feel her moving and think about her. I think about what God has done and the miracle of her life. And particularly too, sometimes Prim will come up on the bed and she'll snuggle with me <laughs> and with baby and it's just really cute. Things I've been considering this week have been birth plan. I was assigned kind of the job of making my birth plan last appointment, which was at 28 weeks. I thought I'd share some about that this week. So I put on my birth plan, just some things about my health status, I suppose, <laughs> my history, 
and um, just because I have some drug allergies and things, sensitivities that I want them to be very, very aware of. And I know that it's in all of my medical paperwork anyway, but it's not something I'm, I'm willing to mess with. So I put that right at the top of my birth plan. I split it into a few categories. So I kind of had a before birth category of things and then I had during labor and delivery and then kind of post delivery and things that I wanted for me and the baby after she's born. Before birth, I mentioned my birth partner who will be my husband, God willing, food and drink, um, because I'd like to be able to have that with me. Equipment, being able to use like a birth ball and a labor pool if they have one available. I mentioned monitoring, so whether I wanted kind of constant or intermittent monitoring, I'm hoping for more intermittent so that I can move around more. I talked about pain relief, so I'm going to request not to have any pain relief in terms of chemical interventions just because like i said i have some drug sensitivities and i just don't really want to use it if i don't absolutely have to but i also talked about the things that i intend to do to manage discomfort instead so i talked about hypnobirthing and kind of breathing techniques that i hope to use counter pressure hot water bottle or heating pad listening to music and using different positions. So then I talked about delivery and how specifically I would like to deliver. Obviously I would like to deliver naturally <laughs> if possible and I mentioned some positions that I would like to deliver in. Potentially I talked about having support for the perineum to hopefully avoid tears. <laughs> I hope to use kind of hot washcloths and just like ginger. I've heard that that can be really helpful but We'll see. Hopefully it will do something. I also talked about being able to deliver the baby in multiple contractions. So if her head comes out, but not the rest of her body in one contraction, just being allowed to rest that kind of next two minutes or whatever, and allow her body to come out naturally with the next contraction. And then I also talked about whether I would like an injection. Apparently this is something they can do. Sometimes they give you Pitocin to deliver the placenta quicker. So I you know, talked about whether I like that. The last category that I had in my birth plan was post-birth and newborn care. So I talked about skin to skin, delayed cord clamping. Those are both things that our hospital kind of naturally does anyway, which is nice. And I talked about breastfeeding and just whether I would like support for that, whether I'm comfortable with formula being fed to my baby, um, there is a vitamin K injection that your baby can receive. Um, so I talked about whether I was comfortable with that. And then at the bottom, I just talked about whether I was comfortable with trainees being present during my labor and birth. So that's pretty much my birth plan. And I'm going to bring that to my next appointment. I think at 34 weeks, whenever I actually see the midwives, I have another scan next week, but I'm not actually going to probably get to sit down and chat with the midwives at that stage so anyway i'm going to bring this 34 weeks just talk to them see how um, they feel about the things that i've put in there and see if there's anything i need to add or remove um, and hopefully edit it and then yeah format it put it in my hospital bag <laughs> so that it's ready to go other things i've been considering have been things to do when i'm recovering from childbirth because I don't know, I, a lot of people have said to me like you should try to rest as much as you possibly can. So, and also I hope to breastfeed. So it's probably going to be a lot of like sitting around with baby anyway, <laughs> just trying to figure out breastfeeding. So I am looking up just like things to do while I'm breastfeeding. Like, I don't know, getting some podcasts in the wings that I can listen to or audiobooks that I can read, that sort of thing. I've been working on my registry, which has been really exciting and fun, and I will maybe do a video entirely on my registry, so I won't go into detail of that today, but yeah, it's been fun just to put it together and have it ready. We're going to have a virtual baby shower with some of my close friends and family, and I'm just, I don't know, it's weird because it's virtual, obviously, and that's not ideal, but with COVID and just with um, distance, obviously, it's better than nothing and I'm really really excited about it. So two more things. 
One thing that I'm not putting on my registry because I want to buy it myself is a Bible. And I just think this is a really special kind of purchase. And so I really want to get her a specific like children's Bible. I haven't actually chosen which um, one to go with. So if you know of any really good children's Bibles, let me know. But yeah, I'm looking into just getting her one that we can read to her. It's just something that I really wanted us to get personally for her as a special gift. And, you know, obviously she'll have that for her early childhood. The other thing I was going to do is I have a friend who I was reading her blogs about her children's births and she always chooses a hymn for her children. She chooses like a special hymn and she'll frame it and or like, I don't know, put it somewhere special for them. And I just thought that was such a sweet idea. So I've been thinking about giving our baby a hymn and just what hymn that might be. And I want to have a chat with my husband about it too and see what his thoughts are and see if we can come up with one that is just like specifically suited to her. And I guess like, I don't know, the situation maybe we were in um, and having her and some of the things that God was teaching us during this time of being pregnant with her and all that sort of thing. So good gracious doggy, you are shedding. Um, it's springtime. She is losing her winter coat. I feel like that's kind of it today. Prayers and praise. I mean, I was very, very encouraged this week. We had several friends who were just praying for us and for our journey as parents. And it just was so, so sweet for me to, because we didn't even request prayer. It was like we were at a Bible study and they just prayed automatically about it. <laughs> and it was just really comforting because, you know, it's such, I've talked about this a lot, I think, in these videos. It's such a big responsibility to be a parent and particularly to strive to be a godly parent. It's just so much pressure, but knowing that we have brothers and sisters in Christ who are praying for us and encouraging us and walking alongside us, and they're going to push us to be more Christ-like and just like... <laughs> continue to go to the Lord and ask him to keep working in us and to keep shaping us as people and give us the power through the Holy Spirit to be godly parents. I just think like it is invaluable. It's, it's really good to know that people are interceding for us. They're going to the Lord and the Lord is not going to abandon us in this journey. He's going to keep shaping and growing us through it. And you can have that encouragement too. If you're feeling overwhelmed in parenthood or pregnancy or whatever it may be or just life in general God cares about your struggles and he cares about being involved in the situation that you're in and he will move in it and maybe he won't do the thing that you would like him to do or the thing that you would expect him to do but God always has a way of redeeming situations he always has a way of giving us comfort when we need it and giving us strength and giving us wisdom and he really will come through on those requests and so having that assurance is just really um a gift that's it for today feel free to like comment subscribe all the things as usual and i will chat to you soon see ya